common here. Uh, B. Coleman here, and uh, not a homeopath, just a lover of homeopathic medicine. <clears throat> Today we are discussing alcoholism or addiction to alcohol. Uh, I know personally, uh, I have a brother who's an alcoholic, and I, I know a couple of other people. It is a heavy burden to carry for them, I think. Um, the first protocol that I have, I got from an interesting source. It, it is actually a Banerjee protocol, but it is um, from a website they created in Spanish. And uh, that happens to be my first language. So um, here we go. Um, it involves two remedies taken separately. The first is nitricum acidum. Nitricum acidum in 200 C. That one is twice a day. <clears throat> then the second remedy is uh, five drops, that's a dose, for Avena sativa, S-A-T-I-V-A, Avena sativa in mother tincture. And that one is taken three times a day. <clears throat> Again, those are set, taken separately. Um, Joette Calabrese has long recommended Nux Vomica 30 uh, to alleviate uh, the horrors of hangovers, and it works quite well for this. But she once had a client tell her that her husband used Nux Vomica 30C for hangovers so frequently uh, that he unwittingly cured himself of alcoholism. Uh, so uh, as time went on, he no longer had the desire to drink in the first place. So apparently Nux Vomica 30C by itself will resolve this problem for some. I don't know if for all, but for some definitely. I would dose um, Nux Vomica 30C in three times a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another uh, protocol that I found along the way, I think this was from somebody's post, but I don't recall who I didn't take note of that. Um, it is also nitricum acidum 200C twice a day. And then the second as a remedy combo uh, of Nux Vomica 30 at the same time with Caledonium C-H-E-L-I D-O-N-I-U-M, Caledonium 30C, twice a day. And then the third remedy uh, is Ludicum, L-E-U-T-I-C-U-M, Ludicum 30C, and that one is taken once a week. Um, all remedies are taken separately except for that combo. <clears throat> Now here's a, a neat little trick that I heard about. I, I as as I am not an alcoholic, I, I have not had occasion to use this, so I don't know if it actually works. But I have been told that if you take a little vial of alcohol and uh, tie it to something in your clothing that is in constant uh, contact with your skin, you will feel like you are getting alcohol. And thus, you don't, it, it keeps you from drinking. Um, if anybody tries this, I would uh, love to know if this uh, works. And finally, the last thing. <clears throat> As always, I try bringing um, remedy rates for those who own remedy makers. So here's what I found. In the Yvonne Cohn, C-O-N-B-E, Yvonne Combe uh, rate chart, um, I found a remedy that is simply called alcoholism, and the rate is one, two, three, seven, eight. But in that same chart, Yvonne Combe rate chart, there is also a remedy called addiction to alcohol, and the rate is one, one, two, two, two. What I would do is I would make a remedy from both of those numbers and make it a combo. Um, as always, um, with these rates, you are not given a potency. 
and recommended potency nor uh, recommended frequency. I tend to like to make a, a remedy that has both a very low and a, and a much higher potency, even as high as 10, um, I'm sorry, even as high as MM, and maybe on the other end, 3X, and make one remedy out of those so that you can get the benefits of both um, low uh, potency and a high potency. And I would take that at least twice a day or a little more often if, if your muscle testing calls for it. Um, that is everything that I have. And hopefully that has been of uh, some help to some of you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? If there are no questions, then I will uh, present to you Ahava McLaughlin, and uh, let's hear what she has to say. We always enjoy all of her input. Thank you, Ahava. Go ahead. Thank you, B, so much for sharing that. That's so cool to hear that someone cured himself accidentally. <laughs> that's so hilarious, sad. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, okay. <laughs> So because I know you and Dr. Imran are going to give such great homeopathic protocols, um, I today I'm going to focus on just explaining the liver and the pathways to detoxification of the liver and the theory of homotoxicology. So I think the understanding of the mechanisms on how things work could be probably very helpful, um, you know, just from the back end point. So uh, as we know, the um, you know alcohol needs to be um, filtered through the liver, and that's why you know end stage alcoholism, you know fatty liver disease and whatnot. And um, nowadays, it used to be just you know if you had fatty liver, it was like oh do you drink alcohol? Nowadays, you know that's not as common anymore. I mean, while it is so common, but now there's other triggers to fatty liver disease. Um, which is environmental, the foods that we're eating, the water that we're drinking, the air that we're breathing, we're getting a lot of chemicals that our liver is really taxed and overworking itself. So I want to go ahead and um, just say it's the largest, um, it's the largest detoxifying or your skin is the largest detoxifying organ um, in, in the body. So the liver is the second largest organ um, and it has like 500 known functions. It does a lot for us. Um, so it, I'll just go ahead and read through a list here. It manufactures one quart of bile every day. It filters two quarts of bile every minute, produces glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. It converts glucose um, to and from glycogen provides a place for fatty acids, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals to be converted into usable forms. It makes um, important cellular building blocks, including cell membrane compounds, phospholipids, and cholesterol. It manufactures carrier proteins, low density and high density lipoproteins or LDL or HDL. And so actually that just reminded me, I had someone who just came to me with a uh, seven or eight year old little girl the triglycerides are through the roof. Um, HDL is low. She has a clean diet. What's going on? What's going on here, right? Um, it, it's 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 really interesting. You know, it it does all this for us. It breaks down excess amino acids to form urea, a waste product excreted in the urine. It produces blood proteins and um, including immune factors like clotting factors and um, stores iron, vitamin A. B12 and D. I'll repeat that again. It stores iron, vitamin A, B12 and D. So if you if your blood tests um for your clients or patients and they're low on these and they can't get their vitamin D levels up for example, we should always look to the liver and fat metabolism to see um how we can help those levels um uh get absorbed. Okay. And it also recycles old blood cells. So the movement of toxins from outside the body to inside the body, which is in within the cell is complex and there's multiple steps to this. Um, so we have phase one and phase two of liver detoxification. 
phase one is basically where the toxin comes in and your body does its thing and should transfer a, a fat soluble toxin into a water soluble toxin where it's excreted through the bile and the kidneys. When your liver becomes congestion, AKA one of the ways is alcoholism, um, then it, it, it no longer can function in phase one and it functions in phase two, which is a good thing because it's there for that backup and that reason. Um, so all, all, all toxins, um, must be liquefied in order to be able to be eliminated through those, those, um, elimination pathways. So the kidneys, um, if for reason it can't, it can't be safely liquefied into water, it gets either a stored in different, it recirculates through the body, right? And the blood, and then it gets stored in different tissues and organs, or it's trying to push out through the skin. So people who have lots of skin issues, um, that's toxins that just cannot be filtered anymore. And it's coming out through the skin and, or into the lungs, people with lung issues. Um, you know, so if you're, if your patient or client is an alcoholic and they, have lung issues or skin issues, think about the phase two liver detoxification pathways. Um, okay, so that's great. So I'm gonna go into phase two. Phase two has six pathways. And the way we remember this is called GAG-SAM. G-A-G-S-A-M is the acronym for that. So those include glutathione conjugation, amino acid, glucuronidation, sulfation um, or sulfoxidation, me uh, methylation, acetylation. And yeah, those are the six. So I'll go over them a little bit in more detail. Glu glutathione conjugation pathway. This is uh, removes acetaminophen, nicotine, insecticides, heavy metals, um, organophosphates, and glutathione is an antioxidant of the liver and basically helps the liver heal itself. So when a child is sick, for example, and you give them acetaminophen, that is compromising the glutathione conjugation pathway in the liver in phase two. Um, amino acid uh, pathway. This is where aspirin and food preservatives get filtered through. Um, without proper breakdown of protein, the detox pathway will be compromised. So we need amino acids, aka from protein sources, to be able to break down um, aspirin and food, food preservatives. Glucuronidation, this is, um, this is where our alcoholism comes in, this pathway. Um, it, it, it helps remove um, the drugs of painkillers and an inability to break down these toxins causes the liver to fail. So excessive use of painkillers, um, acetaminophen also here, and with excess alcohol consumption, can lead to the liver failure in a short period of time. What's beautiful though, is the liver is very regenerative. So I think like it's something like every seven days, obviously the more you've damaged it, the harder it is to come back from, but nonetheless, it is something that can be regenerated. So that's good news. Another pathway is sulfation, um, sulfoxidation, and this is where chemical dyes, estrogen and breakdown of blood thinners, also acetaminophen. So if you consume, uh, this is a tip for the sulfation pathway. Um, if you consume asparagus and it doesn't cause that unique odor in your urine that only asparagus causes, then you'll know this pathway is compromised. The last two, okay, acetylation. This is the one that handles antibiotics. And I mentioned this one, um, I thought about, do I mention all of them or just the pathway about alcoholism, but it all kind of ties in together. The toxic effect of antibiotics does what? It does what to our digestive system? It causes yeast and over, you know, growth of candida. And then that, you know, the, the, again, skin issues, maybe in the urine, maybe in the scalp with the fungus and the toes and whatnot. So untreated can cause, become systemic and have high inflammation. And women, you know, also can uh, develop vaginitis because of this. So this is all uh, kids with ear infections um, also that have repeated antibiotics. So this all compromises liver function and it has a cascading effect into other areas. 
The last one is methylation. This is the one that we all hear about. Are you methylating? Can you methylate that methylated B vitamins, et cetera, et cetera? Do you have MTHFR? This is the path, the very popular um, uh, detoxification pathway that everybody talks about. But keep in mind, there's five others. And um, glucuronidation is the one that deals with al uh, breaking down alcohol. Okay. So methylation, this uh, deals with the toxic effects of birth control, steroids and hormones, um, improper use of estrogen replacement, taxes this pathway. Um, and this is where we get women who have breast positive uh, breast cancer, uh, receptor positive breast cancer, I'm sorry, and uh, should consider whether they should be on a pill or, you know, these estrogen pills. Um, all right. See. Okay. Physically speaking, uh, there is markers on the face that you could look for um, just to see like how bad is it. So the I've talked about this before, but I'll just go ahead and repeat is right here. These liver lines. If you see people with liver lines here, sometimes they're small. Sometimes they're big. Sometimes they're like really, like, I'm going to go like this to really like, you know, they're really, really, really deep. But without me having to do that, they're just there. And then we know that depending on the side of the face that it's on, there could be um, maybe some trauma, emotional baggage that they're carrying, depending on if it's dominant on the female side or on the male side. So uh, female side is always right because mom is always right. So if they have a line here, maybe there's a female dominance here with their mother, with a sister, with a, a wife, um, a friend, um, you know. And if it's on the left side, then we know that that is male dominance. Um, when I've looked at photos, for example, from people who tend to be very violent, they have the deepest line on the left side, which means that they probably most likely picked it up from a male figure to act in this way. And it's just crossing down generationally. Okay. So is that hopefully that makes sense. I know I'm giving a lot of information here. I'm going to quickly go through the theory of homotoxicology. It is um, uh, Dr. Rec uh, Reckwig. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, he was a German medical doctor and a naturopath. Um, we see a lot of his recommendations um, for his products in uh, the group. Dr. Imran also has posted photos on this and um he, he is, um, he, he's, he's amazing, actually. So if you can look up on him, you know, his theory of homotoxicology, I'd suggest you do that. Um, there are six phases um, on this. And there are only two things that can cause, you know, a patient to descend through each phase, which is the poisonous load is too great. And the body's defense mechanisms are overburdened, basically the, fa the phase one and phase two detoxification pathways. Okay. So the first phase is called the expiratory phase. And this is where the poison is recognized in from for entering into the body. And it's excreted without minimal, you know, minimal damage to the lymph, the urine, your breath, the bowels or the liver. Um, you wouldn't even recognize that this occurred. It just naturally and organically happens. Um, in a perfect world, we would stay in this phase, right? Um, so the reactionary phase is where this poison is uh, not excreted and goes deeper into the body. This causes the body to have a reaction such as hives, acne, diarrhea, vomiting, and all of these uh, symptoms are a way of the body's a way of eliminating this poison. So they are not only normal, but also necessary in order to prevent it, your body going into the following phase, which is the deposition phase. This phase goes even deeper. Um, and, uh, let's see this, this is where the skin tags come in, fat accumulation, lipomas, fatty tumors, cysts, fibroids, benign tumors, or fibrocystic breasts. So if you're in that stage, you're in stage three already in the theory of homotoxicology, which we know, um, is pretty common nowadays, right? So if, if we have someone drinking a lot of alcohol and over battering those pathways, then, um, you know, you would expect to see some of these um, growths happen on the body as well. 
Impregnation phase is, is now where we're talking about biological division. Um, this At this point, the poison has gone so deep into the cell that it begins to disrupt the DNA and form abnormal cells. This shows up in, in your abnormal uh, pap smears, um, precancerous skin lesions, and uh, prostate hypertrophy, um, you, you know, et cetera. <clears throat> this is where your doctor will usually say, hey, let's keep an eye on this and check again in six months. Um, but that's literally asinine because in six months, we all know what's going to happen. So really, if that's not a wake up call, you know, I don't know what is, but um, this is very harmful for the patient. So we want to make sure that we really work on that liver detoxification, as well as digestion, immunity, and the whole thing. Um, okay. The following phase is degeneration phase, and we move beyond the abnormal test results and we see chronic disease such as lupus and diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis, um, fatty liver disease, and this requires, you know, more attention. Um, and then the very last and final phase is called neoplasm phase. And this is where cancer is fully present in the body. And we know obviously fatty, you know, really bad fatty liver disease can lead to cancer. And then obviously overspilling into the skin. So AKA it's not necessarily the sun damaging the skin. Someone may have skin cancer and they, you know, never really baked in the sun or put on sunscreen with chemicals that cause skin cancer, but they, you know, if they're dealing with alcoholism this and their liver is overburdened, you see, again, the cascade, it's going now spilling out into the skin. Um, so obviously traditional therapies are toxic are further aggressive and toxic to the body. Um, sometimes it might be needed for a while until, you know, we get them out of that, that, uh, dangerous, uh, space, if it's really far gone. Uh, it depends on the situation, I suppose. Um, but hopefully we can catch it before they get there. Okay, so um, some other markers to think about is, is this person easily angered? Um, do they have a tender acupun acupuncture point of, of the liver four on the right hand? Um, liver spots, the crease, like I said, between the eyebrows, poor, poor nail health. Halitosis, acne appearing in multiple areas of the face, the neck, cheek, back, and shoulders, the tongue, the tongue on the sides of the tongue, if there's wavy like teeth in, um, um, indentations on the tongue, that means those impressions uh, mean decreased pancreatic enzymes, poor nutrient absorption, and it's affecting the liver. So if you have a white coat on the tongue, that also indicates dysbiosis and lack of enzymes as, you know, yeast and candida. And if the edges are dark red or purple, that also indicates a sluggish liver. So we want to make sure that the lymphatic system is um, pumping and moving, and that can only be done by moving, basically, because it doesn't have its own pump as the heart does. Um, the, um, we want to strengthen the li liver, alleviate the symptoms, support cellular health. Um, our cells die when, uh, mitochondria quit producing ATP, which is essentially the gas that runs the body. So balancing the pH of our body will be crucial to the health of the cell and focusing on digestion, um, I would say lymphatics, liver digestion, you know, is all going to be crucial in the first stage. Uh, we could work on the blood, but if you're not working on digestion, basically those toxins recirculate back into the bloodstream if they have leaky gut or if they're constipated and all that liquid gets sucked back into the bloodstream, that's just recirculating toxins. So blood, uh, blood cleansing is always the last in uh, the hierarchy of cleansing. Um, let me just see here. And working on, on, um, immunity, uh, things like, um, I didn't mention, uh, for the gut, uh, let's see here, the gut, we would think things like L-glutamine, uh, turmeric, maybe some collagen, um, glutamine also, by the way, helps with the ammonia. If someone also, they might be susceptible to parasites at this point as well. And that brain fog. So we know that glutamine also helps bind up the ammonia in the brain. And 
for the liver, what herbs do I love for the liver? I love um, chickweed. I love milk thistle and dandelion and burdock root and pokey root. These are all great um, liver herbs. And uh, immunity, astragalus. It actually uh, studies have shown that it actually increases T cell counts, and it could take over a long period of time. It could be taken over a long period of time without concern. Okay, um, I think that's it. I just wanted to go through that. I think it's really important to say. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to. Um, you know, open up for discussion. And if not, I'll pass it on to Dr. Imran. So thank you so much for having me today. Um, this is a great topic. Uh, would you mind saying the um, herbs again, please? Sure. So for the liver, um, I love chickweed, burdock root, um, milk thistle, dandelion, and poke root, which is P-O-K-E. Um, for the, is that what you meant? For the immune system, I said astragalus is great. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then digestion, I mentioned glutamine or colostrum is another good one uh, to, re to, to strengthen that intestinal lining of the digestive tract so that you, you don't longer have leaky gut. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anyone else? Okay, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Imran is an amazing homeopath from Pakistan and we look forward to hearing and sharing his wonderful advice and protocols uh, for alcoholism today. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Here is Dr. Imran from Pakistan. So today we talk about most effective remedies for alcoholism. So first I want to talk about Nux Vamika. First remedy is Nux Vamika. When your alcoholism is in its earliest stage, then it becomes easier to leave the addiction. For those people who have just started to fall prey to alcohol, Naksumika is a wonderful remedy. It is a administrated for faster relief against your drinking problem. It starts showing its effects within a month's time. So we are used Naksumika in Mother Tenture, Nux Vameka in 30C, and Nux in 200C, and Nux Vameka in 1M according to the patient condition. So next remedy is Sulfur. Sulfur is a which help is curing many health issues. It is mostly suggest to those who have started experiencing liver issue due to excessive drinking. One of the vital organs of body, the liver is affected. When you drink excessively, this to prevent degeneration of the liver, sulfur is usually suggest. So we are use sulfur in 30C and sulfur in 200C according to the patient condition. So next remedy is cannabis indica. Next remedy is cannabis indica. Cannabis is often treated as a medicinal plant. There are many derivatives from this plant which is later on used to make many useful medicine. One such homeopathic medicine is cannabis indica. It helps in not only detoxing the body against the ill effects of alcoholism, but also help in preventing associated symptoms to show up. We are used cannabis indica in Merthenture, cannabis indica in 30C and 200C according to the patient condition. Next remedy, we are used natrum mure. 
Latremur, this is medicine divided from the, uh, of what you know to be simple common salt. Once consumes, it help in blood cell production, re regulation and albumin production. These help in coughing up with extreme alcoholism. At time, alcoholism it is triggered in people due to depression. Natremur also help is coughing up with depression. We are used natremur in 6x, natremur in 12x, natremur in 30c, and natremur in 200c according to the patient condition. Next MD is Avena Striva. Next MD is Avena Striva. Avena Striva is from the oat leaves, just as oats themselves are considered to be one of the healthiest food to consume. This medicine made from the oat leaves is no less, it helps to relax the sense and detoxifies the body engaged, engaged alcohol. So we are used, Avena Strava, I see in my clinical practice, Avena Strava help in mother tension. So I give most of the time 10 to 20 drops three times a day. Next MD is Isert Salaf. Next MD is Isert Salaf. A marvelous medicine if the patient has the family history of alcoholism. So we are used in such salaf in 30C and in 200C according to the patient condition. Would you spell Next that remedy? Is Acid salaf. A-C-I-D-S-U-L-P-H. Acid salaf. If anybody so can type that out, that would help. I, I still can't make it out. I'm sorry. Sorry? <clears throat> Could you type that out? I, I still can't make it out what you're saying. Acid salaf. A-C-I-D-S-U-L-P-H. Acid salaf. Acid and sulfate? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. So next remedy is capsicum. C-A-P-S-I-C-U-M. Capsicum is effective for controlling great desire for alcohol. It is suggested when the patient has vomiting and diarrhea. So we are used capsicum in mother tincture and capsicum in 1x, 2x, and 30C and 200C according to the patient condition. Next remedy, uh, which I want to talk about, China. China will remove the craving for alcohol in drunkards who wish to reform, there is internal coldness of stomach and abdomen, liver and spleen in large patient experiences, and there is bleaching of bitter fluid and of food griefs gives no relief. So we are used China in 30C and China in 200C and China in 1X according to the patient condition. Next, I want to talk about sulfuric acid. S-U-L-P-H-U-R-I-C, sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is one of the top remedy for alcoholism. The patient experiences heartburn, sores, and vomiting. Craving for alcohol is an important symptom of this remedy. It is suggested when water causes coldness of stomach, must be mixed with liquors. The patient experiences a relaxed feeling in stomach, which is relevated by heat application, aviation to the smell of coffee. So we are use sulfuric acid in 1X and 30C. So next, I want to again talk about sulfur. Sulfur should be tried when China fails. The patient has great desire to drink alcohol all the time, want to drink from morning till evening or till awake. There is complete loss of appetite and very weak and faint feeling in stomach 
at about 11 a.m. must have something to eat. So we are use sulfur in one x, sulfur in six x, and sulfur 30 C and sulfur 200 C according to the patient condition. So next I want to talk about uh, some homeopathic remedies for the bad effect of alcoholism. So first I want to talk about antimonium tart, antium tart. Antium tart is suggest for vomiting in drunkards with white coated tongue. Antimonium tart is suggest for vomiting drunkards with white coated tongue. So we are use Antium tart in 30 C and antium tart in 200 C according to the patient condition. Next remedy is Avena Steva. Avena Steva is suggest for sleeplessness and nervousness in drunkards. Avena Steva takes away the longing of for alcohol. So we are use Avena Steva only in mother tension. Next remedy is carbonium sulf, C-A-R-B-O-N-E-U-M, carbonium, S-U-L-P-H, carbonium sulf. Carbonium sulf is very useful for people broken down by abusive of alcohol, impotency, color blindness are cured by this remedy. We are used carbonium sulf in 30C and carbonium sulf in 200C according to the patient condition. Next and very important remedy, which we are common use, Cardus Mar. C-A-R-D-U-S, Cardius Mar, M-A-R, Cardius Mar, is very effective for liver troubleness, liver pain, constipation, alternating with diarrhea seen in chronic alcoholic, especially beer drinkers. We are used cardismar in mother tension, cardismar in 6C, cardismar in 12C, and cardismar in 30C and in 200C according to the patient condition. Next and very important remedy, aposinum. A-P-O-C-Y-N-U-M, aposinum, cannabis effective for curing great craving for alcohol. The patients are low spirited and experience anxiety and depression. There is severe nausea and vomiting. The patient experiences difficulty in passing urine and it takes long time. The urine is hot, troubled, mixed with thick mucus and burning in urethra after, after urination. So we are use haposanum in mother tension and haposanum in 30C and 200C according to the patient condition. Next MD, arsenic album. A-R-S-E-N-I-C, A-L-B-U-M, arsenic albums. Stop the craving for alcohol and help in reducing the ill effect of excessive alcoholism. Arsenic patient experiences great anxiety, restlessness, and fear of death. There is a delirium traumas. We are use arsenic album in 30C, arsenic album in 200C, and in 1M according to the patient condition. Next remedy is camphor, C-A-M-P-H-O-R, camphor. Camphor should be tried when fail in controlling alcoholism, the, there is coldness in stomach followed by burning. So we are use camphor in 30C and camphor in 200C according to the patient condition. If nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, then I use camphor 1DH, camphor 1CH, only one dose, one drop in one teaspoon white sugar.
So next remedy is Kofia Kroda. C O F F E A C R U D A Kofia Kroda. Kofia is effective for headache due to alcoholism. Kofia Kroda is effective for headache due to alcoholism. Headache as if nails were driven into the head. Rose in open air. It is also effective for sleeplessness and liveliness due to alcohol. So we are used Kofia Kroda in 30C, in 200C, and in 1M according to the patient condition. Next remedy is Crotalus. C-R-O-T-A-L-U-S. Crotalus. Crotalus is suggest for liver disease seen in chronic alcoholics. So we are used this remedy in 30C and in 200C according to the patient condition. Next remedy is Chimaphila. C-H-I-M-A-P-H-I-L-A. Chimaphila. Chimaphila is effective for removal of renal and hepatic disorder in chronic alcoholic patients. We are using this remedy, Shima Villa in Mother Trencher and Shima Villa in 30C and in 200C according to the patient condition. Next and very important remedy, Gelsemium. Gelsemium is suggested when nervous symptoms are prominent in alcoholic patient. There is excessive trembling and weakness of our limbs. The patient experiences lack of muscular Corridations. We are use gelsemium in 30C and in 200C and in 1M according to the patient condition. Next MD is Lexis. Lexis. L A C H E S I S. Lexis are ill natured, inlicant to volunteer crimes, vindictive, jealous. Inclined to kill others and not himself. Talkativeness before and during uh, drunkenness. We are used Lexus in 30C and in 200C according to the patient condition. Next remedy is Nux Vomica. It suggests when there is giddiness and restlessness after alcohol drinking. Heavy vomiting after drinking, the patient experiences nausea and thribbling after drinking, nervousness due to drinking wine or liquor. Naxumika is patient are frightened by little noise and spring up and night with dreadful dreams. The patients have a tendency to envy and jealousy. They commit suicide by shooting or stabbing. We are used Nux Omega in Maritancher 1X, 30C, 200C, 1M, 10M, 50M, CM according to the patient condition. Next and important remedy is opium. Opium over and over again, expression of fright and terror on face, breathing, strenuous vision of animals, and ghost with uneasy sleep, face dark red. We are use opium in 200C. Next remedy is petroleum. P-E-T-R-O-L-E-U-M. Petroleum is effective when the drunkards are seen without energy, without strength of will, unable to refuse a glass of wine, vomiting after the least excess in drinks, the patient talking too much when drunk. We are use Petroleum in 30C and in 200C according to the patient condition. Next MD is Renculus bulbs. R-A-N-U-N-C-U-L-U-S. Renculus bulbs. Is effective for mental attack of drunkards. It cures coma due to heavy drinking of alcohol and other bad effects of alcohol. So we are using this MD in 30C and in 200C and in 1M according to the 
patient condition. Next and last family is scale car. S E C A L E scale car. Scale car is suggest for insomnia due to the intake of alcohol. So we are use this remedy in 30 C and in 200 C according to the patient condition. So that's all what I have. So next, if anyone have a question, I am here to answer. Otherwise, I am over to I invite to a current Daniel for a talk sometime. Hi, hi everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me, Dr. Imran. Uh, I'm Karine Daniels. I'm a homeopathic practitioner, a EFT practitioner, and mother of a 16-year-old teenage daughter. Um, so something I wanted to talk about um, with um, alcohol addiction and alcoholism, um, it's very, very important to actually, uh, when we treat homeopathically, to address um, the, the reason for the, uh, the initial addiction. Um, and we need to look uh, into the psychology of addiction and why that particular person has become an alcoholic. And when we're treating someone um, who is an alcoholic in, in homeopathy, we would look at that. So we would look at their um, emotional history, um, all that sort of thing, and their, their, their constitutional type. And there are certain um, constitutional types that are going to be prone to alcoholism. Um, so the, the, the cause is to, you know, become an alcoholic, uh, it's usually to sort of dampen down emotions and to um, take the rough edges off of, off of life. Uh, and it can be caused by all sorts of things. You become an alcoholic because you've had the history of trauma, it can be abuse, uh, PTSD, depression, um, or people have never been well since a bad experience or fright. So we, we'd really look into that and treat with remedies that actually address those issues rather than, um, than you know, remedies addressing actual alcohol addiction. So it's very, very important to look into that. And there are, there are certain types of people that are more, pro, you, know, you know, some people are, um, will never get addicted to anything, but there are addictive types of personalities. And with, with alcohol, uh, there are some big ones, uh, the big, uh, you know, polycrest, big remedies. Uh, arsenicum will be prone. The arsenicum person, who's quite a restless sort of patient, has, is full of fears. Uh, will be prone to sort of dip into alcoholism. Lacasis is another one. That's our snake remedy. They're people that are very talkative. Um, as alcoholics, they, they have bright red uh, faces uh, or rather sort of purple faces and red noses. Uh, they don't like anything around their neck, uh, but they're very, very talkative people. And quite expressive and of course nux vomica which is the big one which has been mentioned here a lot uh it you know nux vomica people are type a personalities sort of the businessman everything is done over the top a he he or she overindulges in food and particularly alcohol and nux vomica has to be top of the list list it as in alcoholism and sulfur as well that's been mentioned they're quite extravagant and intellectual um, types of people um, they sulfur people often will um, become alcoholics if they if something happens that makes them so um, so we would treat we would use those remedies to to treat that um, also, uh, it's important to look into the history of the patient and because you, you can actually inherit a craving for alcohol and uh, 
people that have parents or even grandparents that were alcoholics or there's a history of alcoholism in the family, then we would use uh, the remedy cifilinum. Cifilinum, uh, which is a nosode, uh, and I would advise uh, you ask the help of a homeopath if you're going to use that remedy. But very often it will it will help with that. Um, to overcome the uh, the habit of uh, of alcohol, there's one big big remedy, um, and it, that's sulfuric acid. The second one is quercus glandium spiritus. That's a long name. Quercus glandium spiritus. It's um, it's a remedy made from acorns from the oak tree. Um, but sulfuric acid uh, has been used many times uh, by people where you can drop it in without the person knowing. Um, it's not very ethical, but uh, you're trying to get someone to stop their craving for alcohol and then you can sort of move on to other remedies. But to create a... a a disgust of alcohol, sulfuric acid, and you can drop that in their wine or their or their whiskey or their liquor or whatever, whatever is their favorite uh, drink, um, and and they won't know. Again, not very ethical to do that, but it will create an aversion to to alcohol, and it's been reused. It's been done many times and verified. Um, that's it really there's there's so much to say so many remedies um uh I, yeah i just wanted to mention uh something uh bea said about carrying a little vial of of alcohol on a, on a bit of string is that right bea yeah um what i do i i do i do some um some other cell salts to help with um um toxins in the air that type of stuff yeah i pin it uh i put a little rope and, and a, sa a tiny safety pin on it and then i put it uh attach it to the top of my pants and tuck it in under my underwear so that it's touching my skin that's the idea right there it needs to yes. be in contact with your skin it's fantastic, yeah, and it's it's actually what we call carrying a remedy, and we can do that with any remedy, and it's really good for, particularly for people that are really, really sensitive, but I thought you mentioned that, um, that you, uh, to actually put alcohol in a, uh, a little bottle, is that not what you said? Uh, yes, alcohol, yeah. uh, the same thing with tobacco, if you have a, a smoking addiction, yeah, uh, you can put some tobacco, kind of wet it a little, put it in a vial and put that next to your skin. And I am told that it gives the body the false sense that you are actually getting uh, the tobacco or the alcohol so that you don't actually act on it. On, on drink. Yes, yes. And it's a little bit what we call in England, the uh, giving the hair of the dog also, except that you're not <laughs> ingesting it. So you're you're giving the same. Yeah. Um, and um, and th th this is where I wanted to mention that there is actually a remedy, uh, which is alcohol itself. So it's um, you can find it as alcoholinum or ethyl ethylicum. Uh, it depends on which country you try and source it in. So you're actually taking it, but in potency. And I would suggest to take that in a 6C, so quite, lo quite a low, just repeated. And it would be similar to actually carrying the alcohol itself, if you like, except that you've got it in potency and it will actually act um, on, on that. And that's really good when you've got alcoholism that's, uh, that's well established. So alcoholic people, um, you can give that remedy alcohol itself in potency. And it will help them to to um, sort of overcome the addiction, and also to resolve sort of the uh, the 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 ailments. Sorry, from alcohol. Um, three times a day. Yeah, pretty much just three, or even four times a day in a six C, even lower. 
uh, and then you can repeat it even more often, a little bit like cell salt uh, if it's really low. So, you know, if you can find it, I think it's quite difficult to find, but in a, in a 3x or 6x, in that case, you can even make it yourself from your favorite beverage. Um, so if you've got an alcoholic that craves just red wine, say, um, you can easily make a 3x of that. So they're taking back in potency what they're addicted to. And that's not so much homeopathy, it's auto, autopathy, isopathy, but it doesn't matter what it is, uh, that works really well. And it, it's the same with cigarettes or, or any drugs, you can do that. And um, that's really good alongside the other remedies. Um, that's it really. Again, there are, there are so many. Oh yeah, particularly particular um, um, beverages. So um, the beer drinkers, one big remedy, always think of Cali Bichrome. So uh, people that uh, just drink beer and are uh, addicted to beer, Cali Bichrome is the one. Um, I believe uh, brandy is uh, Lidum, Lidum, which is, we all know that remedy. Uh, Lidum is also for red wine. And um, so any people that have a, a, a hangover from, from beer, Cali Bichrome, from, from wine, uh, think Lidum, uh, but in general, you would use for for any alcoholic beverage. You would you would use Nax vomica. Nax vomica really is the big one. Uh, and just one more little peculiar one, uh, and then I'm done. Uh, people that um, women uh, that uh, crave alcohol and really go over the top on it before their menses, before their periods. Um, I've, I've met quite a few. They'll suddenly start drinking um, their red wine or whatever just before they get their period. And that the remedy to think of then is selenium. Selenium. We all know it as a supplement, um, but selenium in, in potency. Uh, low, repeated or in a 30 C. That's it. Um, that's it for me. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to to answer. <clears throat> uh, could you tell me what the other name for alkalinum was? Thank, thank uh, you. Yeah. If. Uh, it's a, it's a, sorry, it's, it's a So that's E T H Y L I C U M. Otherwise, it's alcoholinum. So alcoholinum. We tend to add that inum uh, in home. Uh, okay. Thank you. That helps. So I got two ways to approach it. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Did you have a recommendation for the potency for the leadum? For leadum? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, anything you can start low at a 6C, three times a day. Um, if it's uh, because of intoxication, if you're thinking of the, the, the red wine or the, or the brandy uh, and the person is really intoxicated and, or has a hangover, then uh, you can go up to a 30C. Um, same, repeat it three times a day um, until you, know, you see improvements and then you can back off to two times or to once until it's completely gone and then move on to your next remedy. Um, you could go up to 200C, but I don't think it's necessary in, in, in this case. Thank you. You're welcome.
Dr. Imran, are you on? Okay. I want to say thanks to everyone. Next Sunday, same time, we meet again here with new topic. And God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Imran, and God bless you as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Always welcome.